one incident in your life could change everything. I was in kindergarten and there was this noise outside the window and the teacher says, wow, there are fire trucks outside. And I remember I just lit up because I felt like they were real life superheroes. I couldn't see outside the window and all the kids started grabbing their chairs. And I grabbed my chair, I was so excited and I bring it over to the windowsill and there's this big iron grade radiator dividing the window. I remember when I finally got to see my heroes, my face lit up. And about a split second after that, one of the other children grabbed my chair and I went face first, head first, right into the radiator. I was bleeding and I was rushed to the hospital. My mother said I was never the same after that. I had these learning difficulties, very challenged focus. My concentration was really compromised. I had a very poor memory. I couldn't retain information. I wouldn't be able to read like the other kids. And then I didn't know what was wrong with me. It actually took me an extra three to four years just to learn how to read. And I actually taught myself how to read by reading comic books late at night. And my favorite superheroes growing up actually were the X-Men because they didn't fit in. They were the mutants, they were the outcasts. And I felt growing up with these learning challenges that I didn't fit in. And I felt like I was one of those people without the superpowers. When I found out the X-Men School for the Gifted run by Professor X, Charles Xavier, actually resided right there in Westchester, New York, and that's where I lived. And so I remember every weekend when I was about eight or nine years old, I would ride my bicycle around my neighborhood and I wanted to find that school because I wanted to run away. I wanted to run away to find my, my school, to find my superpowers, to find my super friends. And really, I remember a defining moment when I was nine years old. I remember that a teacher was talking to another adult thinking I wasn't paying attention or maybe thinking that I wasn't smart enough to understand what she was saying. And she pointed right at me and said, that is the boy with the broken brain. And I remember how hard that hit me. You know, children understand more than you think that they understand. And I remember always referring back to that moment all through school. Whenever I didn't do well, I was like, oh, it's because, you know, I'm broken. It's because I'm different. It's because my mind doesn't work like everybody else's does. So all of high school was this, was my struggles. I, I would work so much harder than everybody else. And um, I always thought it was unfair because my grades didn't reflect that. But I was lucky enough to get into a university. And I remember freshman year, I took all these classes ready to achieve and I actually did worse. And things got even more difficult for me. And I was ready to quit school because I didn't have the money as it, as it was to go to college. And I didn't want to waste that and waste time. And so, when I told that to my friend, my friend was like, Jim, before you quit school and tell your parents that you're, you're leaving, uh, why don't you come with me this weekend? I'm gonna visit my family this weekend. Just get some time away, get some perspective. So I agree to go there. And I remember right before dinner, his father was walking me around his property and they're pretty well to do. And he asked me this very innocent question, which is the worst question that you could ask me at this time. He says, Jim, how's school? And I just, it just hits me. I start crying and bawling right in front of this complete stranger. And, um, and I tell him that the, my whole story, how I, I have a brain injury and I'm not, I don't learn like everybody else. And, um, and I, I was, I'm the boy with the broken brain and school is just not for me. And then he says, Jim, stop for a minute. And he looks me right in the eyes and asks me this question. He says, Jim, why are you in school? Why are you in school? What do you wanna be? What do you wanna do? What do you wanna have? What do you wanna share? And honestly, I've never thought about that before. I start to answer him, he says, stop. And he pulls out uh, from his back pocket a diary, like a journal, and he tears out a few sheets and he hands them to me and he makes me write down my answers. My answers of who I wanna be, who I, what I wanna do, you know, what I wanna have, what I wanna share with the world. And um, I don't know how much time went by, but when I was done, I start folding up the sheets of paper to put in my pocket and he grabs them right out of my hand. And I'm freaking out because I wasn't expecting anyone to see like my dreams and my fantasies, right? My goals. And he starts reading them to himself. When he's done, I don't know how much time went by, but he looks at me, he says, Jim, you are this close to every single thing on that list. 
And I'm just thinking, he spreads his fingers about a foot apart. And I'm thinking, there's no way. Give me 10 lifetimes, I'm not gonna crack that list. And he takes his fingers and he puts them to the side of my head, my temple right here. Meaning that between my ears is this, is the key. You know, it's my mind, it's my brain. And he walks me into a room of his home and it's wall to wall, ceiling to floor covered in books. And I started looking at the title of these books and they're these biographies of incredible men and women throughout history and some very early personal growth books. Norman Vincent Peale, The Power of Positive Thinking, The Magic of Thinking Big, Psycho-Cybernetics, right? Think and Grow Rich, all, you know, all these books on mindset, the power of the mind. And he says, Jim, I want you to read one of these books a week. And I'm thinking, have you not heard anything I've said? I have all of these learning difficulties and all these learning problems. I have so much schoolwork to do. We have midterms. And he says, stop. He's like, Jim, don't let school get in the way of your education. But I said, you know, that that's really good insight, but I, I really can't do it. I don't want to promise this and, and break my promise. And a very smart man, what he does is he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out my goals, my dreams, my bucket list, if you will. And this time he starts reading every single one of my goals, all my dreams out loud. And something about hearing like your dreams coming from a stranger's voice, you know, encanted out into the universe, it shook my heart, it shook my spirit, my soul, something fierce. So I commit to reading one book a week with that leverage and motivation. And fast forward, now I'm at school and I have a pile of books that I have to read for school and a pile of books that I want to read that I promised to read for my life. And I can't even keep up with one of those piles. And then I saw the mug of tea and on it had an incredible genius named Albert Einstein. And it had a quote there, it said the same level of thinking that's created the problem won't solve the problem. And it made me ask a new question. It made me ask this question like, what's my problem? And I came up with this answer saying, well, I'm a real slow learner. I learn very slowly, I'm a very slow brain. Well, how do I think differently about it? Well, maybe I can learn how to learn faster, right? Learn how to learn. And another part of me woke up thinking there has to be a better way.